Hey guys, Katie from the K-Show Blog here and today we're talking about Egypt. Now I've noticed that my on the road style vlogs where I'm in the destination do a whole lot better than the ones where I'm here in the office just talking to the camera. But there's a bit of a dilemma because I don't have any uh, on the road style vlogs to give you at the moment since I'm taking a bit of a break from traveling and working on my website and things like that. But I have a bit of a solution for us. So let's give it a go. So we're gonna pretend with this high quality homemade blackboard and drawings by me. But first, if you haven't already, you might wanna pause this video, hit subscribe, hit the like button. That's a bit preemptive to like it before you've seen it, but hey, spread the love, help my channel grow, and I would love to grace your phone or your computer in future with actual on the road vlogs. But for now, let's get into it. So the first tip I have for visiting Egypt, especially as a solo female traveler, is to get a guide. I know, right? That's the level we're dealing with. So this is probably my biggest and most important tip for solo female travelers. I experienced walking around in the different cities by myself and I experienced it with a guide and with a guide was just a hundred times more enjoyable. When I'd walk by myself, it was pretty much never ending cat calling, people trying to take selfies with me, people trying to get me to join their tours, people just walking next to me and wouldn't go away. One dude even tried to pay me to walk with him. Like it was just this relentless harassment, but not in a scary way, more just in like an annoying way, like a mosquito buzzing around your head when you're trying to go to sleep. It was kind of like that annoyance, but all the time. And it just didn't stop for me anyway. I don't know if that's just because I'm like really, really, really ridiculously good looking or that it's just a treatment that you could expect and any sort of solo female traveler would probably get the same thing. I think it's the latter, which is why I re really recommend getting a guide. When I walked with the guide, it was like having a buffer for all that harassment. And you were able to actually just walk around and look at the sites and see things without that, that constant hassle. So it really just minimized a lot of that. And like the guides were able to help give you insight to local life there and teach you things about the history. So it had a few benefits really. Now you have a few options as far as how to book a guide. You could join a group tour, like a Kentucky style thing where you travel to each of the cities together and do everything as a big group. Um, or you could get a private guide. And this is what I did. So I was usually just me and the guide walking around seeing the sites. And that really worked out well for me because I liked having the freedom to sort of be on my own schedule. And the guy just is there to take you to all the places and they organize everything. So it took a little bit of the hassle out, but I still got to stay on my own schedule. So I preferred that method, but either way, like having some sort of guide or tour will definitely help. All right, tip number two is get ready for some shopping. Make sure you have room in your suitcase for the things you're gonna buy and room in your budget to buy some stuff because there's a lot of great shopping in Egypt. I really loved it. If I wasn't traveling carry-on, I think I would have brought back a suitcase full of stuff, but maybe traveling carry-on might have saved my budget a little bit, but the shopping was awesome. Some of my favorite things were handcrafted jewelry from like artisans in Giza. That's where I went for jewelry and it was really awesome. Essential oils, I got a case of like six essential oils uh, that I still use to this day and I haven't been to Egypt in ages. I think it's been over a year and a half, but they're all in my cupboard. I still use them. I got mostly the perfume style oils, but they also have like just the regular essential oils for, you know, therapeutic use. But I, I just roll it on and use that as a perfume and they're lasting forever. And there's just such a nice experience to buy it as well because you get to go into the the place where they sell it all, but go into a private room, they'll bring you a hibiscus tea, you get to try them all out and smell them all and they'll teach you about their uses and then you can pick the ones you want to take home with you. That was like probably one of my best purchases that I really love and especially since I am still using them now, like I get a lot of use out of them. Egyptian cotton anything. So I bought a pair of pants that I love and I'm wearing them right now because they're so comfortable for like around the house. I love them. But in the store I went to, they had like linen and handkerchiefs and all sorts of other things that you could buy. But definitely while you're there, it pays to, you know, invest in a little bit of uh, Egyptian cotton. Papyrus art, so you can visit a factory where they make it and then give you a demonstration of how it's all made, which I found that really interesting. And then you see all the art on the walls and you can pick which ones you want to take home with you. I got more modern sort of different 
style that I had never seen before and they were really unique but they have all the traditional stuff as well and that was a really great experience getting a couple of pieces of art. I've seen some blogs saying don't support this because you're, it costs more since uh, your tour guide will probably get a commission if you go that way but I don't think it hurts to support other people and it was a nice experience for me so like I would recommend it to others. Stonecrafts is another one. You can go to these factories where they have all sorts of cool stonecrafts for the home. Uh, like I said I was trying to carry on so I only got something little which was this. My little cute scarab beetle but they had all sorts of different stones and different things you could buy and that was like really cool and again you got a demonstration with people making it of how everything was made and that was really interesting as well just cool to be connecting with people and chatting about what they do so those were a few of my favorite things that i bought but long story short make sure you have room in your suitcase and your budget to do a bit of shopping because it's a really awesome place for shopping and you can get a lot of unique things so number three always have a bit of money on you Money for tip is something you're going to hear a lot. Sometimes it's legitimate when they've provided a service and you should be giving them a tip. Other times it's for stuff that you never even asked for. Like sometimes people would walk with me and then say money for tip. And it's like, I didn't ask you to walk with me. I was fine walking on my own. Either way, you're going to hear it quite a bit. It's good to have some cash on you and in smaller notes for tipping and then smaller purchases like water bottles or snacks while you're out and about. I got my cash out from the ATM when I first arrived at the airport and it lasted me until about the last stop i think in the last couple of days i just topped up from an atm while i was out in town but you could convert it um, at one of the exchange places before you go or however you're going to get your money either way it's just a really good idea to have some some small change on you and be able to use that for tipping and stuff and since i booked everything through my guide i paid my lump sum to him and then he organized paying everything like the entrances to all the sites the hotels the activities all that sort of stuff so like I really only needed cash for my whatever I wanted like souvenirs and food and things like that so that ended up being super convenient for me because I just had to worry about paying one person and then I didn't have to worry about anything else it was just shopping so it was definitely easier for me personally and I preferred it that way for this trip so number four cover up So I don't really love talking about this because I always get a lot of hate comments when I do, but you need to cover up when you visit Egypt. You're gonna have a far better experience and you're gonna need to cover up most likely more than you do at home. Like you will dress definitely to what you do at home. You might even have to buy clothes. If you are used to sort of having your shoulders out and all that sort of stuff, you might even need to buy a couple of things just so that you can cover up while you visit Egypt. And when I say cover up, it doesn't mean you have to go covering everything from like the neck down to your wrist and everything like that. When I say cover up, I just mean cover yourself from shoulders to knees and everything in between. So no midriffs, no like short low cut tops, no uh, short skirts and things like that. You just want to have this main area covered and you don't want it too form fitting and shapely. Like try and keep it a bit loose. That's actually going to benefit you more if it's hot there anyway because you can get a bit of wind through and it's, it's nice. But uh, just make sure you cover up. Like I said, I kind of hate talking about this because I've been called a misogynist and all sorts of names and I don't know if people fully get what I'm trying to say. Um, because people usually are like, hey, we're women, we can wear whatever we want, and all that sort of stuff. It's like you can absolutely wear whatever you want, but should you? Like, is that a good idea? I think not, personally. So just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from, you can make your own decisions for your life, independently of anything I say. That's cool, but... I'm a solo female traveler, I have a solo female travel blog and vlog and all this stuff and my recommendations are mostly based on practical advice that will keep people as safe as possible while they're out traveling. So I try to give practical advice that I would give myself if I was going back, that I would give a friend if they were going somewhere and I try to root the advice in being responsible and respectful just to keep people as safe as possible. There's already a lot of risk uh, being a woman traveling alone 
I just try to not add to it and try and minimize it as much as possible with the advice I give. And I get all my tips from my own experience, from observing others and talking to local people to get their sort of perspective on what different things mean in their culture. So I don't just like make it up to hold women back and uh, keep them from doing whatever it is they want. I just try to keep people safe as possible. So as long as you're not a dick about it, I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on this. I think it's good to cover up a little bit. It shows a little respect for the culture. It helps minimize the negative harassment and just helps the time be a little bit more enjoyable. Um, it's kind of uncomfortable wearing that many clothes and being that covered up, especially in the heat, but the payoff is worth it in my opinion. All right, tip number five, getting from place to place. So depending on your preference, there's a few ways to get between the cities if you are traveling around Egypt. If you're doing a boat cruise, you'll obviously be going by boat through to all the cities. If you're doing a big group tour, they might have their own bus. You can catch trains or you can fly. I just took flights. So I went from Cairo to Luxor and then to Sharm El Sheikh as well and back to Cairo to go home. So that was really easy for me. I think I did Egypt Air for all the flights. I had no issues with it, it was really fast and easy and helped me maximize the time because I didn't have a lot of time and I wanted to see as much as I possibly could while I was there. So that was a great option for me, but definitely there's a lot of options and you could just pick whichever one suits like your travel style and your budget. Number six, there's more than just the pyramids. So getting around kind of brings me to my next point, which is just that there's so much more than just the pyramids. So I definitely recommend trying to add in a few cities and experiencing a bit of what else Egypt has to offer. I visited Cairo, Giza, Luxor and Sharm El Sheikh and they were all so different and they each had something unique to offer which was really cool because you're in the one country but then each place was so different from each other and I think it would be such a shame if I just went to Cairo, done a day trip to the pyramids and then stayed in Cairo. Yeah, I would have missed so much of what Egypt has to offer and it would be it would be so wrong to base my perception of Egypt just on Cairo because it, it, everything was so different to that. So Cairo was loud, it was energetic, it was hustle and bustle, it was very stimulating all the time. But then I got to Luxor and it was like quiet and much more calm and laid back and casual. That was my favorite spot of the tri trip. Then Sharm El Sheikh, I got there and it was like beachy, resorty type vibe, almost more party vibes a little bit. It was just very different. And then Giza was like sheep walking down the street and the horse and carts and stuff. So I definitely recommend if you can arrange your trip where you can see a couple of the cities. Uh, I have my blog guides which will help you do that. And also your tour guide will help bring it all together. And with your tour guide, you can have the one tour guide that will travel with you to all the cities. That's a little bit more expensive because then you have to pay for their travel costs as well. Or do what I did and I had the one tour guide organize it all, but he would organize a different guide in the different cities to meet me at the airport when I arrived. It was only Sharm El Sheikh that I did by myself and I didn't have a guide there. But for example, when I went to Luxor, I got to the airport and a different guide met me and then I um, toured with him for that chapter of the journey. So there's a couple of different options if you want the one person or if you don't mind having different guides. But yeah, definitely try different cities and, and just get like a full experience of Egypt, not just Cairo. We're up to number seven now. This is a big one. Get a SIM card. So this is such a big one because every hotel that I stayed at said they had free Wi-Fi. They did not have free Wi-Fi. No place I stayed had Wi-Fi in the rooms. Most of them had it in the lobby and sometimes it was good, but sometimes it wasn't. So I definitely recommend either getting a SIM when you arrive in Egypt, or if you have a good roaming plan that's not too expensive with your carrier, phone carrier where you live, maybe just use that. But either way, make sure you have some way to be contactable because you need to stay in contact with your guide for like pickup times for the next day and things like that. And it's really annoying <laughs> to have to like late at night, you finish a big day of adventuring and you just want to sort of like charge your camera, go through photos or whatever, check in with people, have a shower, go to sleep. 
kind of wind down for the day but you got to like run out to the lobby every couple of minutes to check if you got a text so you know what time to wake up so that was like pretty annoying for me some of the places like getting to the lobby was a big effort uh, like in Shah Sheik the resort like you had to walk for ages to get to the lobby and then they gave you like 20 minutes on the Wi-Fi so you get a little voucher with the password so then every 20 minutes I'd have to go back and check if I was organizing things so just Take out that annoyance and have a reliable way to be contactable. Don't rely on free Wi-Fi in the hotels. In my experience at three hotels, it was not that good. Number eight, safety and logistics. Uh, that was meant to be a Superman logo, but it kind of looks like underwear. <laughs> when it comes to safety as a solo female traveler, it is a little bit more intense and it could be overwhelming so I definitely don't recommend it as your first solo trip I absolutely recommend starting somewhere a bit easier and building up to this because you are going to get a lot of street hassle a lot of attention and it could be really overwhelming and then make you hate solo travel if you've done it maybe a little too early in your solo traveling uh, experience so of course there's going to be outliers some people will probably be fine with it on their first trip but as a general rule I would say start with smaller trips in sort of like easier destinations and then build up to this one because like i said if you're walking by yourself for me like it was non-stop hassle and you have to be really confident to just keep walking tell people to go away tell people no like you have to have that um oomph about you i don't know what to call it but that just that confidence and that um not not to be intimidated by those things and i don't think that comes with your first trip so it's safe and you can have a great time but i would just recommend doing this one after you've got a few solo trips under your belt so you can enjoy it a lot more as far as safety goes you can do all the usual safety precautions that you would do when you're on a solo trip and just amplify them a little bit more so you want to be really alert and aware of your surroundings maybe a little bit more than usual and then all the common sense stuff like keep your belongings secure and zipped up don't you don't want to encourage pickpocketing don't walk around alone late at night drunk things like that guard your drinks and um, all the usual stuff I have a post on my website I think it's like practical safety tips for solo travelers all that stuff applies here. The only difference is probably it's just a little bit more heightened and you'll be covered up more. And above all else, like you always trust your instincts and follow your gut because that's never gonna steer you wrong if you actually listen to it. Once you get there, you'll notice there's a lot of security in place. So pretty much every time I entered my hotel, I had a bag check and I had to walk through a scanner. That was the same at a lot of the museums. And there was also like car checks to enter a lot of the big sites. So just anticipate that and don't be surprised if you have to get your bag checked all the time if you have a little day backpack and it's easier since you're going to be going through a lot of bag checks try and keep what's in there as minimal as possible just to make it easier and quicker to get through all those things number nine we're almost there hibiscus tea you have to try it Right, sometimes I think my blog is like a traveling tea show because I've talked about the mint tea in Morocco, the apple tea in Turkey, the high tea in England, and now hibiscus tea in Egypt. You have to try it. It's amazing. When you order it, they will ask if you want it sweetened or not. You do want it sweetened. If it's unsweetened, it, it kind of tastes a bit bitter and it's not that nice, but the sweetened one will rock your world. You're welcome. Make sure you try it. <laughs> Yay, number 10, we made it to the end. My last one is hot air balloons. It's a little bit different to what a hot air balloon looks like, but hey, we're gonna go with it. My biggest advice is like, make sure you can experience as much as possible. And one of those things should be a hot air balloon ride in Luxor. It's incredible. It's an early start, but so worth it because you get to see the whole landscape like lit up in that soft morning light and it's it's just an incredible landscape it goes from you can see like the green lush area from where the river is the Nile and then it's sort of like there's a line drawn in it and then it goes to this like tan brownish um, color landscape that's all more rocky and deserty kind of looking so but it is like so green and then tan and it looks so cool with all the 
mountains and it, like it's just amazing I could have taken photos up there forever and I have a post on my website about the hot air balloon I went with and the tips you need to know for doing it there are a few rules about what cameras you can take and things like that so I definitely recommend reading that before you go so you can be well prepared but even if you don't go with the same company your guide will be able to help organize a hot air balloon experience and it's definitely it's something you won't regret like it's just so beautiful and it's so interesting because you see it like you see the landscape while you're driving around during the day, but then to see it from the air was just something different. And it, it gave me like more appreciation for how beautiful Luxor was, to be honest, um, seeing it from land and then air. Uh, it's just beautiful. So that really didn't work out at all how I planned. <laughs> at first I had the window open, so it was like really, you know, lit up, but then it made this huge white patch on the blackboard so you couldn't see anything I was drawing. And so I tried it in the dark and I didn't even know if you could see anything, but I don't really want to do it all again. So that's just what happens when you try new things, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I hope it helps if you are thinking of visiting or you just dream of visiting or planning to go as a solo traveler or otherwise. I hope it, it helps bring it all together and gets you prepared for the trip. Uh, I think it's so possible to have an amazing time there. The media doesn't always show that, but it's definitely possible because I had one, so I know from experience that, that you can. Just really make sure you get a good guide, use a lot of common sense, be as respectful and uh, responsible as you can with your actions, and trust your gut and like just be open to it being an amazing time because there's a lot of beauty in Egypt for you to see and it's there waiting for you. So that's it. Please uh, remember to leave those comments on what you think about covering up. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Uh, otherwise, if you have any questions, just pop it in the comments, throw a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Every little thing helps and I will see you next time.